So we're back on the banks again. Today you've joined me at A1 Pits in Nottingham. And there's a selection of pits on the complex. There's six pits in total. And I'm fishing pit number six, and it's the biggest out of the complex. And I've been here a couple of hours. I've got three days fishing, so I've got plenty of time on my hands. And I've had a couple of hours this morning with a marker rod, just having a look around a few swims. And the wind's been really blasting for the past couple of days down to this bay area. So I'm hoping that a few fish have come in, been mooching about, and obviously I can tag a few. Now, I found a few nice spots, a few silty gullies, a few gravel patches, and I've put all three rods out. I'm not fishing too far out, I'm fishing probably the furthest I'll go is about 100 yards. The other two rods are scattered between 50 and 60 yards out, and I've got a selection of baits as well. I'm not just fishing straight boiler like normally. I've got maggots, I've got sweet corn, I've got pellet, and I've even got a bit of ground bait. Now, I've been told there's about 800 fish in the lake, which is quite a few fish. I mean, but to be honest, it is quite a big lake. You know, I don't know the size of it. I'm guessing it's probably 50 acres, maybe 60, and that's just a guess, but... Yeah, I've seen a few fish showing at the moment, which is looking really nice, about 70, 80 yards out, and that's where the, I put some bait out earlier, so I'm crossing my fingers that we might be in with a chance in the next few hours. But I've been told it's not an easy lake, it's, it's quite tricky water, with the size of it and the depths. So at the moment, we've got really high pressure, it's probably about 25, 26 degrees, you know, really hot day, and the next two or three days that I'm here for, it's going to stay the same, so... I'm looking for any calm, flat spells on the surface, because I'm guessing the fish are going to be in the upper lays at the moment. Although I saw some travel in the margin earlier on, I'm going to keep my eyes out and just keep chopping and changing my tactics and try and snaffle one out of the bag as quick as I can. So like I said, I've got three days here, I've got plenty of time. If I haven't had a bite between a day, day and a half, I'll move swims or even lakes, depending on how I feel at the time, and then basically go from there. Well, just approaching about one o'clock, it's absolutely scorchy. It's about 25, 26 degrees now. And yeah, I'm not gonna be getting a bite off the deck. So I'll put some zigs out. I've got them fished about 10 foot off the deck, 111, one about 14. So I'm just about three or four foot under the surface. I'm guessing that's where the fish are gonna be held up at the moment, but we've had a fresh wind come in and it's actually pushed the opposite end to the lake. So, and with it being a fresh wind, I'm thinking, Normally on big gravel pits like this, fish do tend to follow fresh winds most of the time. So I'm not, I'm a, I'm a little bit 50/50 now. What to do? Because I've looked at the margins. The margins look bang on for for patrolling fish. You know these warm weather conditions. You normally see them going over weed beds, but I've seen absolutely nothing at all. And I've walked down to the bay area, absolutely void of fish. So I'm not too sure what to do. To be honest, I don't know if I'm going to be moving or not later on or staying staying put. But um, yeah, it's dead, it's dead, it really is. And like I said, the wind is battering the complete opposite way to when I turned up. Some fish showing in this big bay area. This is called No Carp Bay. I put some mixes out and the seagulls have been an absolute nightmare. So what I've done is I've put a controller float out and then I've got a really large size mixer on there. And this wind is absolutely perfect. It's blowing right into this bay. I'm fishing, I've just wound in the rods. I'm just fishing here and I'm having an hour just pottering about in this bay area and see what what progresses really there's a lot of them down here sort of midway out and then you've got sort of a group of them around there as well i've had to up the controller float as well but the one i was using before was a small one i've gone for the large one to get the distance let's see if we can bag one Quite a few fish, quite a few knocking around to be honest. Still blistering hot sunshine though, it's about 23, 24 maybe. Oh, let's give it a bash, see where we get. Oh, that's nice. I've gone quite far out and then the fish either side, I'm gonna bring the float back and then hopefully one might be able to nab on that way.
Well, just come to about eight o'clock at night. I'm absolutely burnt to a crisp, I really am. I've been standing there for a good four hours. I've been trying everything. Dog biscuits, mixers, uh, bread, chopped down, little trimmed down boilies. I've got some little dark pop-up boilies, tried them. They were having none of it. There's still fish there now, but I'm gonna call it quits. Gonna put the kettle on, make some food and just see how tonight and tomorrow morning pans out. But it'd be nice for a fish, it really would. I'm hoping that if I don't get anything tonight or tomorrow morning, you know, we've still got plenty of time to catch. You know, I've got lots of bait with me. I've just topped up the swim. I've put half a kilo boil on each rod. I'm absolutely bollocks. I mean, my face is absolutely bright red. <laughs> so I think I might need to get some after sun on, but that's day one done. Let's see what the second and third day brings. Well, good morning, and it has been a very quiet night. It's about quarter past five. Been up since about four o'clock, keeping an eye on the water. With it being such a big gravel pit, I want to be looking out for signs of carp and stuff, and I haven't seen anything. At the moment, no, it's absolutely dead. And the bailiff did say yesterday that only one fish had come out recently, and obviously with them spawning recently as well, it's going to be sort of a tough cookie to crack. I can't see me catch off the bottom today because it's going to be another warm day. It's going to be 26, 27. The wind is actually blowing down towards me now. It's done a 180 from yesterday, which is nice. So hopefully it'll bring some fish coming into this area. But, you know, I'm still confident we've got three or four hours left before bite time sort of finishes. So it's, it's trial and error. I mean, this slick's coming up now from the spot. So I'm guessing that we have got a few fish in the spot. I don't know if it is carp. It could be tench. It could be other fish feeding because I did put a little bit of maggot in and a few other bits and bobs. So today's plan is I'm gonna put zigs on all three rods, fish them at different depths. I've got one rod in 17 foot, one in 12, one in 10. So I'm gonna have the zigs probably a couple of foot under the surface. I'm gonna keep them in the upper layers because yesterday was a prime example. The fish were in the top of the layers. They were on the surface. Every now and again, some of them would be cruising about. I'm gonna try and cover all bases on the three rods. The surface rod, I'm gonna have that out for a couple of hours, hopefully if they come into this bay area and try and catch a few that way. You know, yesterday was a complete fail. They, they were having none of it. Tried everything, bread, dog biscuits, mixers, you know, you name it, imitation baits. And, you know, they were, they were touching the surface. You know, the dorsals were coming out, moving around, but they were just playing around, you know, getting some sunshine on the backs. They weren't up for taking anything off the top. So I think it's time to get the kettle on, make a brew. And let's see how to downfold. the mix We've got maggie it's pellet chop boily it's just a tiny little bit of ground bait now i've seen fish coming close in just there and then i've seen them just sort of in between as well so i'm thinking there's a nice little deep flat area just there i might uh, sort of just there i might just put a few few scootfuls in and i mean i've got all day to keep an eye on it while i'm surface fishing so Let's see if we can get a few carp in. I can't go too far with it because obviously it's got maggots and stuff in, but this is surely going to attract something in the area. That's Bob on. Hey 
Let's see how that plans out. So I've just put the zigs out. I've got one in about 12 foot of water off the bottom and that's in 14 foot of water. I've got one in 16 foot that's in 18 foot of water. And then I've got one in eight foot that's in 10 foot of water. I think today might be a good day for trying to catch a few carp. I've looked at the spot I, paid, I baited up earlier with the maggots and the crumb and the boarding and stuff. Nothing's been touched yet. So I'm guessing this might be a main patrol route, the sort of marginal line 20 yards out, which means tonight I might have to change the whole approach, go for fishing probably three or four rod lengths out. The weather's at the moment, it's the worst time to be fishing to be honest, you know, it's mega hard pressure. They're not really up for feeding and the spots I've been fishing are wrong. It's as simple as that. I've been fishing where the fish aren't. They're not coming into this area, only in the daytime. So it's gonna be a case of either fishing the margins or fishing mega far out of distance with possibly PVA bags. We'll play it by ear. But for now, I've got the zigs out. I'm gonna leave them. They're all fished out around 80, 90 yards. And what I'm gonna do is every 25 minutes to half an hour, I'll, re I'll pull 12 foot of line back towards me, resit it on the bobbin, give it another half an hour, drag another 12 foot, and basically bring the baits towards me until I get to the end in the margin. Because if there's fish knocking around all on the surface, especially in front of me as well, you know, we've got to bag something, surely. So just approaching about five o'clock, mega warm day again, about 29 degrees I think it's today. But plenty of fish in front of me, I've been doing a bit of surface fishing, one of them actually took the mixer, didn't hook it unfortunately. But I'm just having a quick minute in the shade because it's absolutely bursting hot at the moment and I don't want to get sunstroke to be honest, but it's nice to be seeing the fish in where I am. And that far peg down there, I put some bait in there, unfortunately the swans have come in there and the carp didn't return so I'm not too fussed about that, but this bay area I need to concentrate and put on my timing for the next few hours on here, try and catch a few fish. Or just one will do me. You know, I've never fished a lake before. I'm always up and down, left and right, you know, trying to work out what to do, where to go. Always trying different things. And I've noticed that the minute any bait is put in this lake, the minute the carp come near it, they are gone. So I'm not going to go over the top of the bait. I'm not going to use any maggots or any sweet corn. I'm just going to stick with boiler. I've got a lot of dark boiler with me, the ASM. We'll put some of that in, probably about quarter of a kilo four or five handfuls of bait on each spot spread it you know spread it fairly wide but not too wide and then basically go from this that's me night time done but it's just these next few hours on the surface these carp are a pain in the arse they really are It's been a very, very quiet day. I've had probably five or six hours surface fishing. Again, nothing at all. I think in total I've done about 11 hours surface fishing and I've had one carp go up near the controller float, went right near the bread, just about to take it and then just spooked and then just there was just a massive splash on the surface. So I think these fish are just patrolling the margins, which they have been doing all day long. I've put little pockets of bait here and there and surely they must have seen that bait on the deck coming in and out you know every hour they're just coming through the like bloody sharks on the water there's loads of them they're still out in the water now and i'm thinking and hoping that tonight stroke tomorrow morning that we can get a bite so now it's just basically a case of just you know wait and see i'm, I'm 
dying to go back around there and do some more surface fishing because they're still knocking around on the surface but I know they won't take it. I've tried everything. Bread, dog biscuits, imitation mixes. I've had zigzag all day as well on the rods. They've been adjustable from a two foot under the surface to probably mid water which is about six foot. And again, nothing. And I've, and I've jotted them all around the swim, you know, left, left, middle and right. I've bought them in, gone further out. And I've even tried zigs in the bay area and you've got probably 17, 18 foot deep there. And I, I literally, I, I could see the pop up that I was using and the cop came in a big shoal of them as well. So, you know, you've got an opportunity for a chance, but they all came in and literally just went straight through it. One of them actually caught it with its tail. So they, they were not phased whatsoever. So zigs don't seem to be doing much. And again, I tried everything, dot pop-ups, imitation uh, mixers, fluoros, whites, yellows, blacks, did foam, yellow foam, black foam. I've tried, I mean, there's nothing I haven't tried to be honest. And obviously it's my first time on the lake. I don't know it that well. I'd like to actually speak to somebody just to get a good insight on, you know, what the lake responds to. Does some bait do better than others? But I mean, generally speaking, I've seen people spotting out, putting, you know, boilies out with the throwing stick. So I think it's just a mixed bag of mashings really on the lake. But, you know, it was, it's getting to that time now where I'm thinking, do I move? Shall I stay? But I'm going to stay put. I was going to go on the river tomorrow for 24 hours, but I'm going to stay put here. I want to really put the time in. I'll have 24 hours left. The bait would have been in there for a while as well. So even if the cop don't take it tonight, maybe tomorrow night, maybe you know and this is fishing as well it's a massive head curve you're always learning and the big learning curve in fishing for me is is lakes i fish i mean the tactics work fine the rigs i've got ronnie spinner rigs on and you know the baiting approach all works everywhere i go it's just finding the right spots finding the patrol routes what they're taking which i know what they're doing now so it's basically just a waiting game and hoping that they take the bait i mean it's a, it's a commercial day ticket water it's a tricky one you know, not even one fish yet, and I've seen plenty of them, so it's it's a tough cookie to crack. But the bailiff said there was about five forties, I think, in here. I think, or, or what was it, eight? It was something like that. So there's quite a few. You know, loads of thirties, some twenties. You know, I saw a few small fish today, probably, you know, low twenties, and they were even avoiding the bread and the mixers. So it's definitely a tricky water. But now I think it's just time to sit back, relax, get the kettle on, relax, make a brew and let's get some of these bloody carp in. Well, good morning, and it is the last 24 hours, day three. We've had absolutely zilch on the fishing front. It's about half six in the morning and there's no signs of fish jumping or boshing either. So I was going to move, but I'm going to stay put. I'm not going to be defeated. <laughs> I'm going to try my best and just, just try and get that one bite. Yesterday about 11 o'clock, the peg further down, because these two pegs next to me no one's in them i've got the joy of doing a bit of surface fishing or popping down and having a little 10 minutes flicking the lead out and you know a little single up bait yesterday about 11 o'clock there was a fish down there with a two or three other ones i think it was about it looked about mid 20 and there was a couple of 30 pounders that were knocking around there as well so i've got a rod ready and probably caught to 11 i'm going to go down there now I've noticed that any form of bait put in the margins, anything, just spooks the carp and they do not go near it and they avoid the swim. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go down, single hook bait, I'm not going to go for a, a par vis one, I'm either going to go for a snowman rig or a bottom bait with a very, very tiny little imitation pop up, a little white one or a pink one. I'm, I'm going to glug it, heavily glug it, I'm not going to go too mad on... Um, you know, PVA bags of ballies, chop ballies or anything like that. I'm just going to go for the single hook bait approach. I'm going to go down, I'm going to lay it down gently, put the rod on the deck and then see if we get any action. I'll, or I'll just fish to what I can see at the time. But these fish, I mean, these are mega pressured fish. On a big pit like this, I, I didn't think it was going to be this difficult, to be honest. I didn't think it was going to be a runs water because it's the, the biggest pet on the complex, but 
yeah, I mean, last night, you see, you know, the amount of time I spent floater fishing as well, surface fishing, with no joy there, these fish are just not having it at all at the moment. And it doesn't surprise me in, in the slightest, to be honest, because it is high pressured, but the opportunities of seeing fish and having bait in front of them, I thought at least one of them would have gone for it, but it just doesn't seem to be, so. Admittedly, this time of year isn't the best for catching carp anyway. I mean, constant high pressure, they're in the upper layers all day, most of the time, and you've got your couple of hours in the morning feeding spells, and then they're back on the surface and, you know, doing the things, so. Let's see what the next 24 hours bring. I've got all my bits ready, I'm all prepped and ready. And I might even try a bit of bread crust as well, just on a hook, compress it down, let that go down on the deck. I'll, I might actually try that first on that peg up there because if that works, that'd be brilliant. But if it doesn't, there's two things that can happen. If I put the crust on, let it sink down, yeah, it's basically free lining it. I don't know if it's gonna spook the carp or not with it being quite a blatant piece of bread, but we'll have to see. But for now, it's gonna be keep on the water I mean, yesterday the margins that were coming through left, right and centre. I've got one in the margins already. It's been there all night. I put a little bit of bait in. Dark brown boiler, which I'm fishing with. Um, and a handful of chops. So, you know, that's not a lot of bait. And it's a dark bait as well. It's not blainting. And if they've gone out to the centre of the main body of the lake in the evening and then the sort of morning time, they're coming back in and patrolling the margins. Then, you know, fingers crossed. They know the bait's there, they can come in, have a little bit of a munch, try and catch one. So, yeah, it's tough as old boots. I love it, really do love it, because it keeps you thinking cap on. And, you know, makes these sessions, I mean, the amount of effort and time I've put in is, is unreal for, for nothing yet. But, but that's carp fishing, and that's why we do it. So, let's see what the next 24 hours brings. One of the joys of owning a pod is that you can just pick everything up in one hit and move it. And what I'm going to do, nothing there, it's, it's absolutely dead. The bay area, seen three or four fish patrolling the margins, so I'm going to set the pod up there, place them in the margins on the patrol routes, and hopefully bag some it because it is getting tough, 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 tough. I think I'll get the pod set up round here and then see if we can nab a few. So we've got all three rods cast out. I've got, yesterday I noticed a lot of carp patrolling sort of this very fine margin in about two or three foot. I've got a single hook bait just down there, well, sort of back there. I've got one just tucked on the edge of the weed just in this margin here. They, they hover that sort of a patrol route all the time. You can see it clear as day. It's absolutely landed perfect. So the third rod, this is going to be on the deck and I've got this placed just in this margin line here. Again, it's, it's where the carp are coming through. I've put baits on all the, all the routes that they're taking. So the amount of fish yesterday that was coming in and out, it's got to produce something. Because other than that, I can't really see much, much else happening. I mean, we've got them out in the middle there now. There's about two or three of them knocking around, just cruising like sharks with the dorsals. So yeah, and I'll still have a go at float fishing. Have a few hours keeping an eye on the surface, see if we can get anything, but failing that, the session is gonna be an absolute blank if I don't pull my finger out and try and bag something. <laughs> well, we're just knocking 32 degrees at the moment. It's about two o'clock in the afternoon. And yeah, I can't see me catching anything on this session, to be honest, I think it's, with the high pressure, they, they forecast warm weather, but not this warm. And uh, yeah, I've been trying just about everything I possibly can in the fishing book, but unfortunately nothing's come avail. So although they're on the top mooching about, they're not really taking anything at all. So I'm just gonna sit here, observe it. And if I do see any signs of fish where they're gonna be really having it off the surface, then I'll get the rod out. But at the moment, it doesn't look like there's that many carp in here either, to be honest, earlier on, 
there was a few more yesterday there was absolutely loads day before absolutely littered with them but today we've had northeasterly winds so it's been chucking here there and everywhere with the wind but we've only got probably a handful of fish and i've moved the pod around here moved it around earlier on and i've put them all in the margins and on the far left margin there is about four or five carp only small ones i think probably 20 25 pound and the patrolling parts of the margins so and i can see them now clear as day they keep coming up and down so i play singles on there i've got the dark um i think it's the link from mainline that's a, a pop-up about an inch off the bottom i've got pineapple pop-up and i've got a little small imitation snail that's on there as well so there's a variety of baits and they're swimming over them left and right and i'm just basically playing the waiting game that hoping that one of them picks the bait up so at the moment it is yeah it's i've had to get in the shade it, this is sunstroke weather this is it's absolute nightmare and fishing like this you can't really catch much in these conditions to be honest it's it's just part of them um, part of carp fishing you know when the weather's really high you know you're, you're going to go for a phase of blanking and i think today i can't see me catching it off the surface tonight i'm gonna have a complete different game change tonight instead of just fishing 50 60 yards out with baited area i'm gonna fish singles i'm gonna chuck them probably 100 120 yards as far as i can get them and then just leave them for the night and hope that we can get some fish but there's been a few people turn up on the lake there's been about five or six anglers there was a couple that was going to set up next to me i mean literally sitting on my lap they were that close but they've ended up leaving i think they've gone to the other side of the lake there's not many on the lake and i spoke to the bailiff earlier and he said the lake has not been fishing at all so with me not knowing much about the lake and him telling me that i mean it's pretty obvious now that catching a fish in this kind of conditions it's just not going to happen so i think it's going to be a case of just see how the afternoon goes we've got probably three or four hours of surface fishing time so play it by ear and see if we can get anything Well, we've just come to the last couple of hours of the evening before it starts to get dark and it has been another gruelling day it really has mega hot temperatures the fish are just not having any of it so a couple of lads have been around earlier telling me that not any hardly anything has been caught on the on the lake for the past couple of days so that's put me in good spirits because at first i thought i was doing something wrong but the tactics that i normally go for normally pan out all right i'm just having a quick final hour flow to fish in but my eyes are just going everything looks the same now i've been looking that long to be fair but there's loads of fish in here i'll try and get some footage of the fish but they just keep coming in and out this bay i think we've got a couple of hours they'll move out the bay go to the main body of water and then what i'm going to do i'll just pub took three singles out as far as i can and just basically leave it at that really till the morning time because the bait is not working they're definitely not for feeding without a doubt so yes it's um gonna be one of them i think the old checkbook and pen but there's always tonight and tomorrow
come on, Mr. Carp, let's be having you. There's about five of them there. Come on. One last try. One last try before the evening time. We have got six, the six carp there. Come on, let's be having you. No, nope, there's eight of them. Well, it's that time. Get some singles out, I think. It's about quarter to nine. So the weapon of choice on this occasion, I've got a three foot leg core leader, three ounce lead, bead probably six inches away, and the bottom is quite firm out there. I've had a good few casts. It's quite a firm bottom. I mean, there's a bit, quite a bit of silt here and there, but in general, it's not too bad. So what I've done, fluorocarbon boom, and then I've got the old faithful Ronnie spinner rig. I've had loads of questions from people. Why do you use different bottoms? Why don't you use this? Why do you do that? Well, the, the wide gate puck I use, you know, I did a bit of trial and error and it works just as good as a curved shank, so I've stick with that. It's my favourite pattern of hook. And the chod screw, to be honest, I can't be arsed messing about getting bait floss, using lighters. It doesn't affect the buoyancy that much, whether you're using a pop-up or a wafter. So that is pretty much the way I do it. Nice blubber put out. I want it sinking fast, I want it sinking slow and that is going to be the sort of main event for tonight i'm going to blast these out as far as i can i'm going to probably get i've got 15 pound mono on the reel so i reckon i'll get 120 maybe at a push and that is going to be the one that's hopefully going to catch the carp because using bait fishing you know 60 70 yards out that's done absolutely nothing and that's after 48 hours so I'm guessing they're going to be out in the middle, away from the angling pressure. There's not a lot of anglers on, to be honest, because when I spoke to the bailiff, he said that the lake's not fishing well, no fish are coming out. A fish, I think, come out probably a week ago. Other than that, that was it. So normally, on lakes like this, normally it's bumper to bumper. You've got caravans, it's bivy sitter. There's been about seven or eight people come today. They've spoke to the bailiff and they've just been put off fishing the lake. They've gone on the smaller pits, but I wanted to have a bit of a challenge, try and bag some of the big gills in here. Like I say, there's a good few 40s in here, plenty of 30s, and there's about 800 fish. But unfortunately, if they're not having it, then it doesn't matter how good your bait or rig is, you ain't going to catch them. So that's going to be that. The one thing I am going to do, just as a safe precaution, if there is a bit of underlying weed anyway, I don't want the hook going in because I've got it quite fast sinking so all I'm going to do just get the uh, the rig in there just blab that round there just round the point and that is just to protect the hook and actually saying that I'll extend that bead to probably 10 11 inches just in case because to the left of me there was 17 foot to the middle there was 14 I don't know how deep it is quite far out so I think that is going to be the daddy for catching a cart maybe. Good morning, and it is going to be a blankety blank. Some lads come round about five minutes ago, and they've been on here for a solid week, and they have had absolutely nothing. It's been absolutely dead. And their regulars on here as well. They said that nothing's coming out. It's just that time of year. Unfortunately, that's the end of the session, but we shall uh, return and succeed hopefully. So I just want to thank everybody for watching. 
If you're on the bank, good luck. And I will see you in the next video.